Welcome back, everybody, to Waterbox Live. We're here every Wednesday, 6 p.m. Eastern. Make sure you smash that like button. Coolest day of the week. It is. It and is. also subscribe. These are not optional. They are mandatory. <laughs> Can't is, say this enough for the betterment of all. It's Just mandatory like it. to hit the like button. Helps us out a lot. So, um, you know, and also those that are liking are more likely to win things, but... Lots of goodies. Um, yep. Yeah, so today we are doing maintenance on the all-in-one 65.4 Peninsula. See what that's coming up soon. Yeah. Let's get started. <laughs> And we're back. All right. Here we are. The best intro ever. I love it. Welcome back, fish heads. Wake up. Whoa. <laughs> I was not right. expecting that. I forgot it. I got it that time. What? Okay. We even said to do it in I the know. beginning I and totally forgot already. I have real big on my paper here. So we try our best. <laughs> let's go over the giveaway with this build series first. Yes, so yes, as okay. you guys know or don't know, we're giving away an all-in-one 65.4 Peninsula um, at the end of this build. Mm -hmm. A couple more weeks to, to go. Yep. You head over to waterboxaquariums.com forward slash all in one. You can sign up to get uh, entries. There's a lot of different ways to earn entries by following us on Instagram, subscribing to us on YouTube. Yep. So here's the page here. <clears throat> also following ORA, following CJ. Uh, lots of different cool ways to get. Yes, yeah, so and not is it only just the Waterbox All in One Peninsula that's a giveaway. There's also an ORA livestock pack mm -hmm. and a CJ pump which is a Tinker 2.0. Sign up there, there's a lot of ways to get your entries in. Yep, tons um, of ways to get more entries. Really cool stuff. Um, another thing that we are doing for this week is yep. a brand new swag pack Instagram giveaway. So what do you gotta do here? This is really cool. Just follow Waterbox and ORA on Instagram. There you can see the tags there. Post a photo of your aquarium and caption which ORA fish or coral is on your wish list. If you want to find out which ones are on your wish list, mm -hmm. head over to orafarm.com and also include the following hashtags. Hashtag ask for ORA and stock my water box. Giveaway closes on June 16th. You get lots of cool swag there. This giveaway, you guys, brand new and it's also available in the USA, Canada, Europe and UK. So we're we'll showing love to all the markets. That's a lot of fun. It'd be cool to see everyone's responses mm -hmm. of what is like your favorite thing for I that you want. Like, yeah. um, spread a lot of love for them because they've been amazing through this build. Amazing, yeah. The aquarium is looking great, and when it comes time, you know, we're got to do maintenance on it too. Mm -hmm. Also, during this stream or towards the end of it, those that are active, engaging, commenting, liking, um, will also pulling two winners. One is for a CJ shirt, and the other one is for a Synchro Silent 2.0 pump. It so pays to watch Waterbox Live. It does. Get some goodies. Um, so we have spent a couple weeks adding livestock. We did inverts, fish, and coral from ORA. This week, we're taking a break from adding livestock, letting the tank continue to stabilize. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're also, of course, testing, adding bacteria as needed. But it's time for a water change. We've got to clean glass. You've got to change those filter socks, all that upkeep. Um, we're going to show you a really fast, easy way to do maintenance on your aquarium, especially if it's like you're new to it, don't really know how to tackle what you yeah. have to do all the time. Um, really just simplify it, and we're going to do that on the aquarium because it's due for yeah, water change. Just to show you guys how it can seem kind of daunting to do these kinds of things, but really you can simplify it, make it really easy on yourself. Yes, absolutely. So we're actually going to do that. Uh, we'll pull questions. You know, definitely put your questions in there into the comments. We'll read them as we can. Also, when we get back up here, we'll take some questions too. So we're going to go clean a fish tank. Yeah, we're going to do it live with you guys right here. Again, if you have questions, put them below. I will get to your questions as, as many as I can. Um, and Jess is going to jump right in over there. I'm going to help her as much as I can, so <laughs> I promise. <laughs> All right, so we're going to clean glass, water change, or changing filter socks, and also changing out our media. Hey, Rich, can you turn on these lights? Certainly. Lights. All right, turn on some more lights. So I got to have everything ready here. I've got buckets, drain hose, I also have a bucket for the dirty socks, and then I have one that has our clean socks and clean carbon in it. And then um, we're going to actually pull our water all the way from our water bat system in the back. But first thing is you've got to turn everything off. 
Um, I'll leave the lights on so you can see. And then we're going to unplug the heater, auto top off, and also your return pump. You don't want to leave your heater auto top off on. It's going to pour in fresh water in. The heater, if it gets exposed to out of water, can also cause it to crack or have issues. So that is the first thing we're going to do. As you guys can and see. And I put them all on power strip. Got the comments here. So put, make sure to post your questions down below. So I just flip a switch. I put everything that needs to be shut down on a, during a water change on one power strip. So it's easy. You're not fumbling with the cord and plugging stuff. So all of that is out and down. And since this is our first water change that we have done on here, what I like to do on aquariums is actually drain out the amount of water your average water change is going to be and make a mark somewhere on the aquarium that you're going to be able to see. This is going to make it so if you can drain to a sink or something, you don't have to measure it in buckets every single time or end up pulling too much out. So I'm going to actually, I just have a little piece of tape here that I'm going to use that I will mark at around 15 gallons. And then once I hit that point, I'll put that in place. And you can use kind of anything. I just had this on hand real quick. And you'll know that's where you drain down to when you want to do 15 gallons. And you can even mark it 5, 10, 15, 20 if you want um, so that you don't have to kind of guess each time. I don't know if Rich wants to clean a little bit of glass. I will, I will. While I start the water change part of it. And um, as those of you that know the giant snail Gary, he poops Gary. a lot. So he's got a lot of nice poop all over the tank here. You know what's funny so is I was wondering on... what that was. That's what that is, huh? <laughs> that is Gary poop, and it has a little bit of blue color to it. I don't ask questions. Um, it's on the other side. Okay. So we're going to actually siphon that out a little bit. Try not to disturb your sand bed. Uh, as much Again, as you guys possible. post questions below. I'm going to help her real quick. Uh, Art did ask, you know, when we expect more stock in. Well, we have stock coming in just about every week. Uh, so, yep. the biggest thing that I can suggest if you're in, looking into getting a water box and it's available, definitely place the order. Or if it's going to be available, definitely place the order. Don't wait. Cause yeah, it's always coming. There seems to be a wait time. The last year has built, has, there's been a tremendous amount of demand, so definitely uh, get your order in for sure. All right. So I'm just going to mark at 15, so I'm not going to worry about. I'm really just going to clean up some of our mega snail poop. <laughs> I didn't know he was going to poop this much, but he's cool. <laughs> it's, that is hilarious, Jess, because I was looking in here like, could that be what that is? Oh, yeah, he leaves a trail everywhere. But he's doing a good job. He's like the only snail in here, he's and he's well doing fed. a great job. So well I'm just going to spot up that. You do not want to disturb your sand bed. You do not want to um, dig into your sand. I'm just doing this to remove it off. You see, I'm just lightly touching anywhere that I see a little bit of detritus, anything like that. You can see where he's been throughout the day. It's like following Gary with his poop. Where's Gary? <laughs> Just follow the trail of food. <laughs> there you go. So I'm not going to be real worried about getting all of it. Also, as you're doing into buckets and you're kind of doing this, you do have to keep an eye on where it's filling up to. Because you do not need to overflow your floor. So I'm going to, in just a second. So Everyone it won't be wants exactly Gary. 15 gallons because I'm not filling each five gallon bucket up completely. Then I'm just going to move it over. Everyone wants Gary t-shirts. I know. We need to do some Gary shirts and all that stuff because he's really cool. All right. And then I just <laughs> let my finger back off. Go on to fill bucket number two. I'm going to find a little bit more areas that might need a little cleanup. Go around the rocks here. And then the rest is going to kind of just let it siphon out because the tank doesn't have much other dirtiness to it. <laughs> Sean pointed out that I know how to walk the line now. <laughs> <laughs> I love it when people point out little things from old, from past episodes. Yes, it means you've been watching everything. We you hand me the hose clamp that is right there? All right, so I'm just going to clamp this in place here. And then just make sure that I don't overflow any buckets. Um, as that drains down. Hannah says, why should you not disturb the sand bed? You don't want to disturb the sand bed because it has layers of different types of bacteria that are either exposed to oxygen or not, depending on how deep your sand bed is, 
but it also builds up some amount of gases and detritus and stuff. You go just kicking up your sand bed, you're going to have more chances of high nitrates, phosphates, or kicking up enough stuff to create ammonia, um, gases, and stuff like that. So it's just you want to leave your sand alone, mm -hmm. touch the very top surface if you need to clean it, but that is really all you want to do with your sand bed. And that's why you also never move your sand bed when you move an aquarium. You always start with a new sand bed. Otherwise, you have a lot of problems that you do not want to have. All right, we're just filling these up a good amount. And we're on our last bucket. Here. Jess, you already explained this, but can you give it one more time? Arnold says, how do you know what percentage of water you're changing? I'm, re I'm referencing how much water you're actually taking out of the tank. So, yeah, so I mean, what amount you choose to change is going to be up to you and your nutrient level, but what I'm doing is for the very first water change is I'm actually doing it into buckets to measuring it. So my goal is 15 gallons anytime I do a water change on here. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty good solid number. And I'm going to actually fill three buckets here. Then I'm going to actually move this to the spot that is about 15 gallons. Mm -hmm. um, and then what this allows you to do for in the future is you can drain right into sinks, a bigger trash can, um, anything so you don't have to measure out the draining and you know, okay, if I make 15 gallons right. of salt water, I drain <clears> to this point, I'm going to have enough to fill it up. Last thing you want to do is like you're doing a water change and then you realize you're like three gallons short and you can't turn your tank on, you're scrambling to either make it or find um, more salt water. So it's a good way to do it and like you said, I could easily have done five, ten, made a mark for each five gallons, each 20 gallons depending on how big the tank is. Cool. But it will make your life easier. I read Art's question wrong. He was asking about socks. What? I guess socks. He <laughs> unstocked. Are we out of stock on them? Oh, uh, yeah, know. they're all coming. Everything's yeah, coming be here in any regularly. Day. Yeah, be here, be here any day. All right, so we are just about at our 15 gallons. Going to go ahead and take this out. Like, water changes don't have to be real in depth, especially if you're maintaining your tank properly. You're not having to, like, try and scrub algae and clean that up during a water change or, like, um, clean up a lot of debris. So maintaining regularly is going to keep you from having um, really difficult maintenance otherwise. So we're going to put those there. And I'm going to go turn on our water up here in the back. So. What I have is our hose from our water vats back here. And then I'm going to go ahead and clip our return line. Now I always aim to put the water so it kind of goes onto a rock. You don't want it to kick up the sand. Same reason as you don't want to disturb it when you're doing siphoning and stuff like that, is you want it to have a pretty gentle flow in. If you put it on a rock, a lot of times you can make it not like blow right into your sand or right mm -hmm. into corals. All right. Steven's asking about the temperature of the water that you're doing the water change with. Do you do anything with that here, or what do you suggest? I don't know, are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's, he, wants, let's he wants to show you guys water vats. So we have them back scenes. here. And we have kind of shown, if you look at one of our previous episodes with the LX, we've also shown you water vats. So here's our fresh water vat. Here's our salt. I brought over um, water earlier today. have mixed in the salt, tested with this regularly to make sure I hit the 1.025. And right now, it is just recirculating so it stays mixed. What I'm going to do is turn off. We're using a Vectra L2 here. And I'm going to close the recirculating part here and then actually open it to the hose that's going to the tank and go ahead and turn the vector back on. Bring it up a little bit, and it's gonna pump water all the way over. And we've made it so that we can reach the whole studio with these water vats so that we are not lifting buckets and stuff like that. We are just kind of flowing the water in. So you see it's hitting right on top of that rock. air bubbles in the line and then so this is another benefit especially for us to mark our water change amount so that we just drain down to where we need we'll drain to the utility sink that's back by the water vats and then go ahead and bring the hose to fill from the water vats 
Anna Reef says, are you dosing anything in this tank? I don't think we are, right? Um, well, not at the moment. Know. There's not a lot in it yet. Um, and also for the question of the temperature of your water vats, if it's not going to be the same temperature as your aquarium, then you do want to have heaters or some kind of chiller because you cannot have like super cold or super hot water going into your aquarium. You will spike the temperature and stress a lot of stuff out. So while this fills, we're going to go ahead and change out our filter socks and our media. This, this is a good one. Should, should we add chemicals? Arnold says, should we add chemicals to the new water during the water change? If so, which one? Um, okay, so you want to pick a salt mix that is close to what you already keep your aquarium at. So if you um, have a salt mix, for some reason you're using a salt mix and the levels are way lower than what you keep your aquarium at, you would need to buffer that water back up mm -hmm. before you put it in. Um, you know, don't pick something that's going to be way higher than what you keep it at because it's going to spike your levels when they go up. You want something right around the same thing that you keep yours, alkaline, calcium, magnesium at. Other than that, you don't need to add any kind of chemicals to it. What salt because, are we using? Uh, Tropic Marin. So we use Tropic Marin on all of our aquariums here. It's a Tropic Marin Pro. It's really good because it's got alkaline around like 10. The calcium and mag are like medium to lower sides that you can kind of adjust them where you want them to be. But it's one of the cleanest, like best salts. So that is all we use here. It's been my favorite salt for a long time. Filter socks, change them at least once a week, ideally twice a week. Pull these out. These are going to catch all your debris, <coughs> waste product, all of that, and keep your clear tank water very, very clear. So even though these don't get very dirty, I still make sure that I'm changing these twice a week. Nah. Just take them out. All of our like all in ones and cubes have a filter sock holder. So you just pull them out. Put your new socks in and slide them right back into place. But nice clean socks are going to be a big difference on how well your tank flows, but also uh, keeping the water nice and clear. A lot of people have problems keeping their water clear, and it just comes down to not a good enough um, mechanical filtration. Carrie says, to what extent can you automate these water changes? Carrie, I'd suggest looking into like the Ecotech Versa. There's also a number of YouTube videos around that you can find around that. Yeah, we, have, we haven't personally, we haven't done that here in the studio. I mean, probably mostly just because we're here maintaining the tanks every day. Yeah, but, yeah, I mean, I've never had to do automated water changes. It does take a lot of um, thought set up because you have to have somewhere that the water goes, somewhere it's constantly feeding from. You've got to have the pumps that can calculate in and out uh, what you are replacing. There. I also so, think the word automated is, is somewhat, you know, maybe misrepresented because it's only automated in the, in the fact that it's pulling water. It's just doing the water change for you, but there's so much that goes into it, and also so much that you have to look out for when you're actually using an automated water change. Yeah, all, you can't also have like a, salt water just sitting there stagnant for long periods of time. So you're yeah. gonna have to constantly have salt water made or pulling from a salt water vat that's staying aerated. Um, you know, and a lot of people don't have somewhere that the line can run to a drain, and mm -hmm. then also a holding system that's kind of close to the aquarium. So otherwise, you're gonna be trying to run it from another part of your house and stuff. So I mean, it just really varies on what you can do. So we have carbon here. Um, I just used some regular carbon in a media bag, rinsed it of any of the powder kind of settlement that comes with it, and that's just going to go into our middle chamber. And I put it where the water's gonna, gonna flow right nice and through it, right on the top, because the water's gonna have to go through to get to the next chamber. Um, carbon, change about once a month. It's good to do with like every other water change. Add phosphate media as needed. We do not need to at this point, so we're not going to run any. And that's really all we got to do is just finish. It's about to fill up another inch or so. And then you've done all your maintenance except for kind of like you're just upkeep on filter socks and stuff. And you're yep. good for another two weeks, really. I Paul says make sure you smash that like button. That's right. It is <laughs> mandatory. I love it when the people are in there and telling them to hit the like <laughs> button. So. We're doing some giveaways here at the end of the stream, so but stick like, around. Yeah, so we're keeping like everything really calm. The corals and fish don't care that we're doing a water change. 
We're not mm -hmm. pouring water out. We're not, you know, dumping it in. We're not doing anything that's real um, busy in there. We're keeping it really nice and calm. Quick siphon, water change, and then just changing media and socks. And that's the basics of what you need to do. Yeah. It does not have to be daunting. It can be done really quickly, too. Yeah. Just have everything ready, and then you're good. And then... I think we're probably good to turn it back on. I wasn't able to get to this side of the glass. I was in your way. I know. Yeah, it's all good. All right. And then what I do is my pump, my hose that comes from the pump does have a little ball valve on the end. So I can kind of halt the filling just to see because I do not want my ATO to turn on. So we are putting more salt water in. So the pump chamber is at the right level. All right. Now I can shut that off, spill a little water, <laughs> <laughs> and then go turn the water vat off real quick. Jess, what livestock are we adding next? Do we know? You is will have surprise? to wait to find out. Two weeks? Next week. Next week? Next week is fish. So we'll have our second round of fish coming next week. The week after that will be some more coral. But we're not going to tell you what it is because you're going to have to watch to find out. Yeah. Lots of new people joining us. Those of you guys joining us, smash that like button. There you go. Keenan, let me know when you want Tank that light. up and running. Back. Uh, whenever you guys get back in there, you can do the switch it off now. Okay. All right, and we are done. Boom. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> Lots of questions coming in. I'm not able to get to all of them. But just like that, how long just did like that, that take? How long did that take? Um, I want to say like 16 minutes. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I'm around 16 minutes. Water change, socks, media, boom, done. All in one peninsula, 65.4. Good to go for two more weeks. Yeah. Love it. Um, and it's just, it's really honestly, even though a smaller tank, trying to make it as automated, not automated, simple as possible. Streamlined. As far as having hoses and pumps to push the water out, to drain away from. Um, the less buckets you're lugging, the less water you're trying to pour up in the top of the tank, it's going to be a lot better. Just have everything ready. I had my socks, carbon, buckets, hose, everything just kind of ready. Just grab them. Get it done. Yeah, make it as painless as possible so that when you need to do a water change, you're not dreading it. It's quick, it's efficient. If it's not easy, you're not going to do it, and then your tank's going to suffer. Yep. So, for sure. I think they're going to work on pulling questions and stuff, but don't forget, we are giving away a CJ shirt and also a CJ Synchro Silent 2.0 um, pump, which is great for a lot of all in one sizes, mixing water, pumping water, it could be used for a lot of different things. So. Also, can we pull up that ORA giveaway real quick, too? I just want to run through that again for these guys. There's a lot more people in here with us right now. We are doing a new swag pack giveaway Very for cool. yeah. ORA. So, there's a couple things you got to do here, not hard, just head over and follow Waterbox and ORA on Instagram, post a photo of your aquarium, and then caption which ORA fish or coral is on your wish list. If you don't know what's on your wish list, head over to orafarm.com, and then include the hashtag, ask for ORA, and stock my water box. Uh, closes on June 16th, so that's next week. Yeah, about a week from now. Yeah, so next Wednesday. So. Uh, I did want to see one that came up real quick, just because I did mean to mention that <clears throat> when we are over there, is the algae scraper. I had it in the tank, I put it in there right before we were gonna do the show and the water change. Do not leave it in there. Someone asks if we leave it in there always. Yeah. Do not take it out when you're done, let it dry out, take any sand and shells out of it. Do not leave it in your aquarium. Um, you're gonna have sand that builds up in there, snails, calcium deposits. You go to use that, you don't check it, you're gonna scratch your tank. Also, I always take it out and before I use a scraper again, I evaluate the blade, make sure it didn't get bent somehow yeah. before you put it into your aquarium. That's very so. valuable information because <clears throat> I didn't used to do that until she taught me that. So I, I know now that take it out, clean it, inspect Don't it. Don't scratch your poor water box without, yeah. for something so simple as that. So we just, see it all too often. Yeah, yeah. Take it yeah. out every time, rinse it, clean it, put it somewhere safe, check the blade before you use it. There you go. So. Knowledge is. Hmm. <laughs> all right. <laughs> 
with the reef. Do you guys turn off your heater during water change? Um, yeah, I did cover that in the beginning. On one single power strip, I keep the return pump, heater, and all the top off. And that I flip off at time of water change because you don't want any of those running while you're doing that. Lisa says, do you rinse carbon in tap water or RODI? I guess if you're really ambitious, you could do RODI. I just do tap water, and then I make sure I like drain it yeah. so that there's no extra tap water um, coming in there. I'm, you could do RODI. Go for it. Yeah, but I don't think you need to. Yeah. yeah. Um, as long as you're not like doing it in tap water and then let it be soaking wet and put it in, you'll yeah. be fine. Alejandro says, what is good amount to change, and is it... And is it bad to do 30% water change? Um, the amount depends on your care, how many fish you have, how much you feed, and what your nutrient levels are. A um, well-maintained, not overstocked, overfed aquarium, 10 to 20% every two weeks tends to work out pretty good. You have to base it on what your tank needs. 30% is no problem. Um, I mean, honestly, a lot of times you can do 50% and have, as long as your temperature and parameters are similar in your water to your aquarium, it's not going to hurt anything. I usually don't say don't do over 50% unless it's an emergency, though. Cool. Paul says, does your tuxedo urchin ever have a hermit crab get stuck on it? <laughs> really want one, but don't want my hermits or snails to be endangered. It's actually a joy ride for your hermit, so let them have fun. Um, no, <laughs> they always drop them eventually. I mean, I've had her tuxedos that have had, like, a snail or hermit on them for a few days, but then they drop off and they go about mm -hmm. their business. Um, and it's probably the most entertaining or like invert that you could have in your aquarium. So just do it. Jack says, I have rocks almost to the surface in the tanks with corals. Is it alright to let the coral get exposed out of the water? Anemones too during water changes. Uh, a lot of reefs are naturally exposed at low tide. Your, your tank, uh, your corals can survive surprisingly amount of time out of water. I don't suggest doing it as a general practice if you can avoid it. Um, depends on how long they're out, but if you are going to expose them, I would kind of take some water and splash them. Uh, make sure that they at least stay kind of wet so they're not too much. But it's probably more stress than you need to do for them. I would drop your rock a little bit or maybe do your water changes from your sump. The battle of I'm not going to try to read that. <clears throat> M him, M him. <laughs> Do you guys clean, clean your socks or replace them every time? Definitely don't replace them every time. Yeah, that would be a lot of money. Yeah. Um, wash them. And then, you know, as they get kind of grody and don't come clean anymore, definitely replace them. Have a couple sets on hand. Yeah, go back to the video where we did a tour of our new studio. We'll show you the, the washer that we have here, I believe. Yeah, so we have a little washer here we use. You can use your washer at home if you won't get in trouble. A little bit of bleach with a couple of rinse cycles and you're good to go. Don't ever use detergent. Yep. Should we rinse our arm before putting it in the water? Um, I guess. It depends what you have on your arm. Depends on what you put on your arm on a daily basis. If you wear a lot of lotions, yeah, go wash your arms. If you work in an industry with a lot of chemicals, go wash your arms or wear gloves. Then that, like, everyday person, if you're not putting lots of lotions and stuff on, um, generally there's not going to be anything on your arm. It doesn't hurt to do a light rinse, I guess. Yeah. But I don't. But I also don't put lotion on before I come in, because mm -hmm. I know there's fish tanks. Um, you know, and I don't really deal with any chemicals. That would be a problem. But if you did, I would be more cautious. Cool. How does one know when their tank is at capacity for fish and inverts? Well, that could be a whole day conversation. Um, <laughs> in general, if your general maintenance is not keeping up with nutrients and you still and you have all of your equipment and everything that you should have, you probably have too much fish because your system can't handle the waste. If your fish are fighting like crazy because there's not enough territory, probably too many fish. If your inverts are eating each other, probably too many inverts. But it gets right more on. detailed than that, but it's probably a general. <laughs> Jack says, does life rock have real coralline algae on it? Does it help with pre preventing green hair algae? It's not real coralline algae. Uh, it does have beneficial bacteria, so it does become live. It definitely does not promote green hair algae like, like regular dry base rock does. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of other dry rocks that are like those really white type of rocks, that kind of stuff, they tend to be the, the rocks in the tank that grow algae for a long period of time. 
Carob Sieve had no issues promoting algae with. Yeah, I don't think I've seen that in any of our No, it's just, it stays really clean. Um, I think because the lye comes alive so quickly and it's not that bare calcium part of the rock. It's good stuff. Yep. I think Keenan's still going over there. Yeah, one second. They just keep coming up. <laughs> I want to answer a question. Someone said, are we going to be at Aquashella this weekend? No, we're We not. are not. Is there anybody that you guys know of that is going, though? Like, do we have anybody there? That's probably not a good no. I don't know, no. but no. I do suggest if you are in the Orlando area, go check it out because it's a really cool show. Yeah, go have We've fun, done, do We it. have exhibited at those in the past. Our company policy right now is we are not doing any shows yeah. just to be up front, uh, but definitely go check it out. That's a cool show. You know First where, time in you know Orlando. You know where you get to see us all the time? Right here Wednesdays yeah, and Thursdays? Yeah, we're here twice a week. There so. you go. Um, not missing out. <laughs> yeah, so definitely, but I, I encourage you guys to go check out that show because it's really neat. It's, it's really very unique. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, Blake, how long should you leave the heater off after adding water? Um, you really don't have to because unless you're adding water that has some extreme temperature difference, it will not have any effect on the heater. So, like I said, I have it on the same power strip as the pump and ATO. When it's time the tank is filled, I click all of them on at the same time. Ruben says smash that like button. I agree with Ruben 100%. <laughs> that is the currency to win this t-shirt and this pump. Yes, it is. <laughs> the currency. <laughs> All right. You're reading this one. <laughs> oh, okay. Steven said, how often should you clean your return pump? Um, I'd say every three to six months is a good roundabout. There's mm -hmm. no real set time. Um, some tanks are dirtier than others. Every three to six months, check out CHA's Pump Clean. It's a really good cleaner for pumps, power heads, and equipment and stuff. I think we have one around here. Yeah, I thought we did. Oh, nice. There you pump go. Clean. Pump Clean. Um, Check that out. It, it's blocked by the words. There you go. Mm. Um, yeah. That's going to make it a lot easier. Just put it in there, kind of let it clean everything up, calcium deposits, all that. Cool. Just to note, Donna says ORA will be at Aquashella showing off their clowns in many different places. Oh, Amazing. There you go. There you go, guys. ORA is going to be there showing off their clowns and what again? Uh, they just said throughout the competitions. So okay, throughout have... the competitions. So definitely. Again, I encourage you guys to go. It's a really cool show. It's a lot of fun, yeah. No yeah. All right. Arnold said, should we blast rocks with a turkey baster every time we do, every time we change the water? Um, yeah, I mean, it is a good practice to do, but what you want to do is you would shut off your aquarium. Or, well, depends. Do it with the flow on, and a lot of it's going to get caught by your filter socks. Do it with the flow off. It's going to settle to the sand, and you can then siphon it. So either way, uh, it is beneficial to blow off your rock, especially as your tank gets a little bit older. A lot of stuff settles into the nooks and crannies. And when you turkey baste your rock, you'll be surprised how much stuff comes out. So that's a very good cool, question. Cool. All Thank right. you guys for the questions. We appreciate it a lot. Hopefully we learned a few things today. You're dropping knowledges. I do. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys want to pick up our knowledge is t-shirts, head over to waterboxaquariums.com. Yes, those are pretty cool. Yeah, we um, and it also... Getting swag, like those shirts, does get you entries into our different giveaways. Yeah. So check that out. And speaking of giveaways, we do have a shirt and a pump that we are giving away to those of them busy in the comments. Yeah, and I do real quick, I want to thank CJ for sponsoring a lot of these, or these giveaways with uh, their swag and their pumps every week. We do appreciate that. If you haven't checked out CJ, go check them out uh, and also follow them on Instagram, CJUS, I believe. Yes, they're very active on social media. Yeah. You'll enjoy watching their adventures. They're some pretty funny people. I like them. Yeah, they're great. So definitely check them out. All right, we ready? Winners? Yeah. All right, it's time for winners. The winners ready? Winners are. That's you. Are you, are you joking with me right now? <laughs> Tony the Rio. <laughs> okay, you, you read it. Keenan, read it. Uh, yeah, put it back up. Put your back. Put your back. <laughs> Tony, you guys were waiting. You guys. Rada Nacimiento. For okay. the shirt. And Tony Stephenson gets the Paul Shockley. Gets the Paul Shockley. That's wrong. <laughs> Paul Shockley gets I'm the. I'm sorry, Paul. We just gave you away. <laughs> <laughs> Things are not well. <laughs> All right. I think we're going to have two, win two winners for the pump. I think we'll call that there two you go. winners yeah, for the pump. Yeah, that's two winners, Keenan, as far as I'm concerned. We're not Paul. giving away human bodies or people. So, okay. We're. Two people for the pump. Emily, you were waiting for that, weren't you? <laughs> that name. 
about the name. We okay. totally skipped. <laughs> All right. Well, congratulations, all three of you, since yes. we have three winners for this week. Um, email winners at waterboxaquariums.com, and they'll get hooked up with the prizes. And yep. as always, hoping to provide much joy and laughter to all of you watching. Yeah. We're back tomorrow. Yeah, so we're here tomorrow, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to continue the LX build. And then we're here next Wednesday is when we're adding our next round of fish from ORI. So you definitely don't want to miss that. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. See ya. Thank you all for watching. Make sure you smash that like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Remember, you can visit us online at waterboxaquariums.com. We're live every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thanks for watching. See you next week.